Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Children's Church today. Um, as you can see here, we have another special guest. This is Auntie Angela. Hi, Auntie Angela. Hi, hello, everybody. Some of you guys might recognize her. She was um, one of the group leaders for teachers for VBS, and she also helps in Sunday school when we were back at church. Um, but Auntie Angela is not just a, a Bible teacher. She is also a regular teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And what, um, what grade are you going to be teaching this year? Um, so I have been teaching middle school, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade these past three years. And next year, I'm going to be teaching third grade. So the same grade as some of you guys out there. Oh, third graders. I'm trying to remember who my third graders are right now. I don't have can't remember. Anyways, <laughs> I'll remember later. <laughs> um, so where is the school that you're going to be teaching? Um, I'm still teaching in Fairfield, so that's pretty far up north. Like if you're driving up through to Davis, um, it, you pass through Fairfield. Mm -hmm. So I actually live pretty far away from church, but it's only like a 30 minute drive. 30 minutes. But you're not in Fairfield right now, right? You're, where are you right now? I'm in Arkansas right now. Arkansas, across across the country. <laughs> almost, yeah, almost I'm in on the, the other side, but in I'm the in middle. The, right the middle of the United States, exactly the middle. And what are the states that surround Arkansas? So Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee are all around me. So oh. it's like the Midwest, southern states. And why are you in Arkansas right now? Um, because my family's here. This is where I grew up. I grew up in Arkansas. Mm, okay. Um, it's the city of Fayetteville, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Fayetteville is very far away from Walnut Creek. Could you um, share with us what are some things that are different about Fayetteville and Walnut Creek? Or what are some yeah. things that are similar? Yeah, so um, in Arkansas here, uh, it's different because there are not many Asians here. Um, <laughs> a lot more, I know California in general has a lot more Asians, a lot more Chinese people. There are a few Chinese churches in the area. Here, there is only one very, very small Chinese church. So the church that I grew up in only had about 70 people total. And uh, we didn't have English ministry, so no children's ministry in English. It was all in Chinese. So I grew up listening to Chinese sermons, so I can listen to Chinese sermons pretty well. Um, <laughs> That's really hard. Yeah, it is hard, but um, I was trained to do it. <laughs> um, this is also a university town, so that's very different from Walnut Creek, too. It's actually a little bit of a bigger city. Um, and Walnut Creek is more of a suburb. Um, here, it's more of like, um, I wouldn't say a city. We don't have skyscrapers, but it's a bigger town um, with like denser populations towards the downtown areas. Which, yeah. uh, which college is near there? Uh, University of Arkansas. So it's like the biggest, I think it's the biggest university, university in Arkansas. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Are there anything, sim is there similarities between Fayetteville and Walnut Creek? Um, I would say they're both like safe and friendly. You know, in the South here, uh, people are known to be very hospitable. It's called Southern Hospitality. Um, people are very, very nice to everyone around here. Um, similarities. <laughs> That's, uh, there aren't like that many similarities. Down here, oh, another difference. Down here, we say, um, howdy, y'all. <laughs> howdy, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we say y'all a lot. <laughs> oh, is there also um, like a food in Arkansas that's that we can't eat here in California? Mm -hmm. You know, Arkansas has really, really great uh, barbecue, fried chicken, uh, biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy was one of the, the main foods that I missed when I moved to California. I miss biscuits and gravy so much. <laughs> that one time, Auntie Steph and Auntie Pam actually took me out to a um, southern restaurant in Berkeley just so I could feel more at home. <laughs> so that was really, really nice. <laughs> Have you been able to eat biscuits and gravy while you've been there? Actually, no. <laughs> oh. well, hopefully I don't think I, 
I don't think I miss it as much anymore. My mom's been cooking really, really, really good food for me, like Chinese food. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe you can get it before you leave. I don't know. Or we can yeah. try to make it for you when we come back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks, Auntie Angela, for being our teacher today. Um, we've been looking at the book of Hebrews, and last week, Uncle Theo um, kind of introduced us to Hebrews. We know that we don't really know who the author is, but we know that he was writing to the Christians who were being persecuted. And last week, we kind of focused on the fact that Jesus is superior, that he's better than a lot of things. He's um, what they call the great high priest. And so he's better than all the other priests in the Old Testament and the, and the law system because he was the sacrifice for us. And in the Old Testament, the priest had to go and sacrifice every day for everybody's sins. But then Jesus sacrificed himself, became the great high priest because um, we don't have to do that sacrifice anymore. But um, the second part of Hebrews, the second theme that we talked about that well, uh, I think you're going to talk about today is the idea of faith. So um, what passage did you want us to look at today? So we're going to be looking at Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 3 and verse 7. Okay, let me read that for us. Um, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 through 3 and verse 7. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In verse seven, by faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness. That is in keeping with faith. Okay, so we see this word faith a lot in chapter 11. Um, Auntie Angela, is there something you wanted to teach us about this passage? Yeah, of course. So um, I think you hear in church a lot about faith, right? This word, you have to have faith. Do this in faith. Trust God. Have faith, right? We hear it a lot, but um, I think a lot of us, even adults, sometimes have a hard time understanding what faith really is. And so here in verse 1 and 2, it really tells us what faith is, the definition of faith. It's the confidence in what we hope for, right? So if you have confidence in something, it means that you're very sure it's going to happen. If you have confidence in yourself to be able to ace your math test, it means you know the math really well, you um, have studied it, so you're very sure you're going to get a good grade on the test. So this confidence is in our hope. So this may sound a little bit strange, but what we hope for is for Jesus to come back, right? Is for um, our eternal life in heaven and in Jesus. So if we have confidence in that, that means we are sure that Jesus is going to come back and we are sure that we are going to have eternal life with Jesus forever and ever. So that's what faith is. Even if we can't see it, even if it's not something that we can see, like getting an A on a math test, right? It's not right in front of us, but it's something that we can, hope, we can have confidence in. And also the other thing um, that leads to the second part of verse one, which says the assurance of what we do not see. So assurance means you're very sure of something. When you put your seatbelt on, you're sure that even if you get into a car crash, you're going to be safe for the most part with a, with a seatbelt, right? So um, this assurance is like a seatbelt for us. We are safe in Jesus and we know that he's going to protect us even though we can't see him. So an example of faith would be air. When you have air all around you, right? But can you see air? I can't. Can you feel air? Maybe only when there's wind, but otherwise you don't feel it, right? It's just around you. It just is. Um, but do you ever doubt that air exists? No, you know that air exists, right? Uh, because you breathe it in and you breathe it out and it, it's, it holds our world together. So you have no doubt that air exists and it's real, um, even though you can't see it or feel it. 
that's kind of like how faith is, right? You cannot see it or hear it, or, or you cannot see it or feel it at all, but you know it's there. Um, and another demonstration, it, I'm gonna ask Auntie Steph to help me out here, okay? So I'm gonna toss her a coin. All right, Auntie Steph, ready to catch it? Ready? Got it. All right, all right. All right. So Auntie Steph, you have, a you have a quarter, right? That's 25 cents, in case you kids don't know. She has 25 cents in her hands right now. And here, I have two boxes. All right, I have two boxes. One of them is a little bit bigger. It looks a little bit fancier. The other one is still pretty fancy, but smaller. And you don't know what's inside, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what's inside yet. So, Auntie Steph, are you willing to trade in your quarter for what's in this box? Yes. Yes? Yes. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, Auntie Steph, for your quarter, this is what you're getting. Okay. What? Nothing in there. There is nothing in here. Huh. Is that worth it for you, Auntie Steph? No. <laughs> oh, I traded the quarter for nothing. Yeah. Okay, so that didn't seem like it was worth it, even though it's so pretty on the outside and packaged well. Eh, whatever, right? All right, so Auntie Steph, knowing that this box had nothing in it, would you like to trade your quarter in for this box? Mm -hmm. What do you think, kids? Do you think Auntie Steph should trade in her quarter for what's in this box? I don't know. I don't want nothing again. I know, I mean, there's a risk. But what if I tell you that this box has a $20 bill in it? Ooh. Oh. So kids, what do you think? Should she trade the quarter in for the $20? But you can't see it. How can you be sure that I'm telling you the truth? Mm. By? Faith. Faith? By faith. So you can't see it, but I'm telling you, you're trusting me that it has a $20 bill in it. So let's see if that faith pays off. Okay, Auntie Steph, I'll take the quarter now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and let's open the box. Oh, what's Woo down there? It is the $20 bill. Woohoo! So I was not lying, I was truthful and as a human, of course, we're not always truthful, but you know who, who is always truthful and never, ever lies? God. I'll be God. Yeah. And so if God tells us that we can have complete hope in him and that, we, that Jesus will come again and that we'll have everlasting life with him, then of course we can trust in him, right? Just like how you guys trusted me that there's a $20 bill in this box. We can, we can trust God all the more. And that reminds us also of Noah, right? We also read about Noah in verse 7. Chapter 11 has all these examples of people from the Old Testament who had faith in God and faith in something that God said or promised, right? And Noah had faith. He was given a warning. It says in verse 7, when warned about things not yet seen. So he was warned by God that a flood was going to come, right? Even though he couldn't see it yet, he had what it says, holy fear. He built the ark that God told him to, and it saved his family. So in the same way, um, we have this promise from Jesus that Auntie Angela mentioned. We have a promise that if we have faith, in Jesus and who he is, what he did on the cross, and the fact that he's going to come back, then we have faith, or we can have faith, that we're going to receive eternal life. We're going to receive heaven one day, and we're going to, we're going to see Jesus face to face. Um, and this is why we call him our savior, right? Because without believing and having faith in Jesus, there's something bad that we would, we would receive. We wouldn't receive salvation. We've talked about in the past that everyone has fallen short. Um, in uh, the book of Romans, Paul talks about all have fallen short and the wages of sin is death. And so um, 
in verse 7, it says, By his faith, Noah, by Noah's faith, he condemned the world. At that time, God was going to condemn the world, which means he was going to punish the world because it was so sinful at that time. But Noah had faith in God and what was going to happen to the world. He built his ark and his whole family was saved, right? So if we have the same kind of faith as Noah, then we will receive something even better. We're going to receive eternal life. We're going to receive heaven. And so thank you, Auntie Angela, for just reminding us again, what is faith? And when we think about faith, we can now think about the $20 bill in that white um, box that, that Auntie Angela showed us, right? So even though we couldn't see it before, I was trusting, we were trusting that um, we could believe that something good was going to be in there that we could re that I could receive, right? So thank you, Auntie Angela, for reminding us about faith and how even though we can't see it, we can still believe it, right? Okay, yeah. we hope to see you soon, and we um, hope you have a safe flight back to California next week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, bye, kids. Okay, bye.